The function f is defined by f of x is equal to this for the values of x between 0 and 360. Now find the range of f, so pretty easy. So 3 is a constant, 2 is a constant, so only this changes. So now we know sin x is only between the values of minus 1 and 1. So let's take the minimum value, so 3 minus minus 1, that should be. So when, when sin x is equal to minus 1, we have f of x will be 3 minus 2 minus 1, that should be 3 plus 2, and that will be 5. And then what if sine of x is equal to 1 for this value? That will be f of x will be 3 minus 2 times 1, 3 minus 2, that should be 1. So the range is between those two values, so we can write the range of f, we can write f or y, is between the value of 1 and 5 for part 1. Now for part 2, we have to sketch the graph of this. Now we understand y is equal to 3 sine 2, so 3 minus 2 sine x. Now again, this is the graph for the trigonometry function. So we have the x values and the y values. So again, the advice is the same as always. Whenever you have to draw a trigonometric uh, graph, we have to use a table of values. So we begin with 0. Now the interval will be what? The interval will be, because the coefficient here is 1, we'll take 90, divide by the coefficient, that will be 90. Now the reason why I choose this is because I want to work with exact values, right? So move on, that will be 90. That will be uh, plus 90, that will be 180. That will be 270, and finally 360. Let's find the corresponding values of y. First one, 3 minus 2 sine 0, that will be 3. Then we have 3 minus 2 sine of 90, that should be 1. Then 3 minus 2 sine of 180, that should be 3. 3 minus 2 sine of 270, that should be 5. And finally, 360. 3 minus 2 sine of 360, that should be 3. Okay, so here we can sketch the graph. Again, it is best to use a ruler to kind of uh, draw your axis, right? And that will be my y-axis. This is the x-axis. I can uh, mark this approximately. Okay, that will be 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360. Now the value of, let's say 1 is here, let's say 3 is here, and 5 is here. So 1, 3, 5. That will be y, and that will be x. So first one, 0, 3 will be right here. 91 will be somewhere over here. 183 somewhere over here. Then we have 270 will be 5, that will be somewhere over here. And then we have this, that should be 3, somewhere over here. Let's try our best to join them by a smooth curve. That should be something like this. Right. Again, it is only a sketch, it doesn't need to be exact. But at, uh, finally, you have to label your graph as y equal to 3 minus to sin x. That will be part two of the question. Now for part uh, three, we have what? We have another function now. Function g is defined by this. Same thing again, where it is between zero and a, or a is the constant to be found. Great. Now, state the largest value of a for which g has an inverse. So we have to understand, for g to have an inverse, it has to be a one-to-one -one function. So for example here, now again, you don't have to draw this. So for it to be a one-to-one -one function, if we draw a line, for example, we must have only one solution. Here we have two points of intersection. The only way to make this become a one-to-one -one function, we have to restrict the values we can take for x. For example, if you stop the value of x right here, x, sorry, the value of a to be 90, you will have only this part. Now when you have this part, when you draw your line, we have only one point and one point. This is how we can make this become a one-to-one -one, uh, function. So a will have to be, the largest value of a 
have to be uh, 90 degrees. That's the largest value of A. Now, for which has an inverse, obviously we know that only a one-to-one -one function can have an inverse. That's why we have to show this. And then we realize that because x values begin from 0, so we have to look from 0, keep going on, until 90, we can have an inverse because from this point to this point, it has a one-to-one -one function. That will be your question for part 3. Now for part 4, when a has this value, which is 90, obtain an expression for inverse. So let's find out. So we know that g inverse, g of x, is equal to 3 minus 2 sin x. First thing first, let y equal to 3 minus 2 sin x. Now sin x will be what? y minus 3 divided by minus 2, right? Uh, we can write um, 3 minus y over 2. Same thing. Now x will be sin inverse of 3 minus y over 2. Now finally, we can write that in terms of x, so g inverse of x, that will be sin inverse 3 minus x over 2. So that will be part 4 of your question to find an inverse for g of x.